Welcome back. Recently, we asked our online viewers what topics they'd like to hear. We got back an overwhelming number of topics and questions. For now, here are answers to some of those questions with Dr. Shabir. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So you're our guest today. We're doing rapid fire mm. Q&A. Sure. So I'm going to start. Uh, so the first one is from Marcos. There are a lot of videos saying why Muhammad, peace be upon him, isn't a prophet. Could you please talk about why he is the last and final prophet of God? Yeah, so Marcus is referring to the fact that there are people out there, critics of Islam and critics of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They put out uh, short clips and they say, okay, he's not a prophet and here's yeah. our, why. And, and they offer very flimsy reasons. So what are good reasons for thinking that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, really is a prophet of God and the last of all of the prophets? Well, uh, we have uh, seen uh, on, on this uh, series of uh, uh, recordings for our TV show that uh, the, it, there, there are many mathematical patterns in the Quran uh, pointing to uh, the work of God. Uh, this obviously then is not a human work and uh, therefore God was with the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him inspiring him teaching him what to say and that's what we have as the Quran and therefore uh, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is a prophet of God. He's mm -hmm. uh, divinely guided. Uh, the Quran itself declares that the Prophet Muhammad is the seal of all of the prophets and based on that uh, Muslims believe that he's the last of the prophets. So this is a very good reason for believing in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Moreover, uh, many of those who critics that we talked about who are putting out little clips uh, about uh, the Prophet uh, on, on YouTube, uh, they are uh, followers of the Bible and uh, we would encourage them to read the Bible more carefully because if they do they will find that the Prophet peace be upon him uh, is mentioned in, in the Bible. Uh, the uh, Prophet Jesus is reported to have spoken about one to come after himself uh, and that obviously is a description of a prophet to come after himself but uh, if one reads carefully one will see the ways in which uh, the gospel writers have tried to um, modify that and make it look that Jesus as if Jesus is the be all and end all and after Jesus there cannot be another prophet and uh, so the the uh, mention of the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is a little bit obscured but but you you need to trace the development and let me just give a quick example of that I know this is meant to be rapid fire but I'll uh, let you give a quick <laughs> example <laughs> yeah so a quick example now it, it is mentioned in 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 the gospels that uh, John the Baptist spoke about a prophet to come after himself uh, he said after me will come one who is greater than I mm -hmm. now uh, the, uh, that obviously leaves open the possibility that the prophet will come after John the Baptist. One might say, well, that's Jesus, but Jesus was contemporaneous with John the Baptist, and he was obviously speaking about someone to come after him. Now, if we look at the four Gospels, line them up chronologically or in the age in which they, they were written, we will see that there is a development here. Uh, in the earliest Gospel, the Gospel according to Mark, uh, it is clear that this is someone to come after John the Baptist, and obviously not Jesus because he's already there, but but in the last gospel, it is both. It is mm -hmm. both the one to come after me and he's already here standing among you. So what does that mean? It's clearly Jesus now. Mm -hmm. uh, so so what, what has happened here is that John the Baptist spoke about someone to come after him. Uh, some Christians became uncomfortable with that. They don't want to think about another prophet to come later. They want Jesus to be the final, the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. And so they modified the saying so that by the time it gets into John's gospel, the last of the four to be written, it now becomes it, 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 it retains the original, yeah. yeah, there's one to come after me, but now it's tiled that to make it refer to the one who is already standing among you. But it can be both really. It's not exactly. really coming after me if it's already standing among you. Yeah. But, but, but the traditionists, they, they, they retain the tradition and they also added their own interpretation to it. So both are there side by side. What the uh, careful uh, student has to do now, whether Muslim or Christian, is to uh, decipher that uh, mm -hmm. combination and deconstruct it, retain the original, which is obviously from what John the Baptist said, and, and discard the commentary, which is obviously what somebody else has inserted to make it look like Jesus is the one. And now we're left with the bare saying of John the Baptist of somebody to come after John the Baptist greater than John the Baptist. And obviously that, that this was not Jesus. Uh, moreover, we can add, uh, I know the time is Perfect. short. Perfect, yeah, that I'm Jesus gonna cut <laughs> you off very soon. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay. Well, 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 Jesus had said, uh, according to one of the gospels, that uh, of all of the, those who are born of women, mm -hmm. there has arisen none greater than John the Baptist. Okay. So uh, according to Jesus, John the Baptist is greater than Jesus. And according to John the Baptist, the one to come after John the Baptist is greater than John the Baptist. So obviously we're speaking about someone who is not Jesus here, yep. someone greater than John the Baptist. Perfect.
Excellent. Okay. Sami El Sayed says, how empires, can you talk about how empires expanded in ancient times and how that affected the mindset of the early Muslims in terms of conquests and its relevance today? It's very interesting that this question is being asked in our present context because Alama Shibli Nomani, in his uh, book, uh, Siratul Nabi, The Life of the, uh, of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, now translated mostly into English, uh, but, but not, not the entire book because it was originally written in the Urdu language. Uh, he has actually drawn attention to this and showed that uh, among the, the, the Arabs, before Islam, uh, there was already a kind of a warish tendency. And uh, we know of this from reading classical Islamic literature anyhow broadly. But, but what the specific angle that al Shibli Nomani brings to this is to say that even after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, lived among them and taught them and so on, uh, there still survived a certain degree of that inclination towards battle and conquest and mm -hmm. so on. So uh, naturally, people reimagined the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to fit that basic sort of mentality. And uh, I in order to understand the Prophet, peace be upon him, and to see him as a peaceful prophet, and to understand the Quran as a book of peace, we need to uh, keep that background in mind and, and recognize that tendency and see where the narratives about our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were slanted towards representing him as a kind of a warlike figure. So that the mm -hmm. earliest books that were written uh, as biographies of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, they would be called uh, Kitab al-Maghazi, the, the book of, co of, of battles as if the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is a kind of a summation uh, of battles. Mm -hmm. Whereas, of course, he lived, he got married, he yeah. had a and so on. So many things happening in his life, but when they wanted to write about his life, they didn't write about his life, they wrote about his battles. battles. And yeah. on that. So, so we need to keep the broader context in, in mind. This was the background that shaped this kind of uh, narrative. Okay. Asif Chaudhry is asking, what does Islam say about global warming? Uh, well, uh, the Quran does not speak about global warming uh, using this modern term, but uh, of course the Quran uh, speaks about uh, the corruption in land and sea. Uh, for example, it says, uh, Corruption has occurred on land and sea because uh, of uh, the, uh, the, the workings of human hands. Uh, and that's interesting that this would have been said 1400 years ago because in those uh, days, uh, people did not uh, think of pollution as, as a problem. The land spaces were vast and, uh, and, and the garbage was not piling up anywhere. People were actually reusing and, and uh, reducing and, and recycling. Uh, every thing that we might discard now was actually saved and reused and put to some uh, purpose. Uh, so it was a completely different style of living back then. Yes, and, and yet the Quran at that time said that corruption has occurred on land and sea because of the workings of human hands. And that leaves it possible for us today to look at this verse and say, well, wait a minute, that speaks uh, exactly to our present situation because we are damaging the ozone layer by our own actions, uh, by our own uh, overuse of uh, chlor uh, uh, fluorocarbons, and uh, uh, we, we are, you know, harming the environment by discarding garbage and, and so on. Um, uh, so, so the Quran speaks about this indirectly. Moreover, the Quran encourages Muslims to uh, not waste, in fact prohibits wasting, and says, in al kanu ikhwana shayateen, uh, certainly those who waste are the brothers of, of the devils. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a very strong language for people who waste, and yet we see often in Muslim gatherings there's so much wastage of, of food. We, we have to keep in mind that these are uh, provisions from God that uh, should be used and, and not abused and misused and uh, overused. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Hey, YouTube. We hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.